Well, it is that time of year once again. It's time for fall baseball, the fall classic. World Series 2018 is well underway. The first two games have now been played. The Boston Red Sox have taken the first two at Fenway Park against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Games 3, 4, and 5, if necessary, will take place in Los Angeles this coming weekend. So with the World Series in full swing, see what I did there, uh, I thought it would be a great time to take a look at two of the baseball games for the PlayStation 2 that I've not covered so far. These games are significant to me, and hopefully at the end of this video you'll understand why. The first, the first one, let me try that again, the first one of these games that I want to show is... Major League Baseball 2K5. Yes, that is Derek Jeter on the cover. This game was published in 2005 by 2K Sports. If you look here, there is no mention of Sega Sports anywhere, and that is because by this time, with this being the last of the 2K5 games to be published, Sega Sports was out, 2K Sports was in, and notice how this is powered by ESPN, by the way. ESPN is no longer the dominant feature at the top of the title. That is because this is the second-to-last game that ESPN-style presentation would be used in. And as you'll see in a little bit, you'll understand why that is. Now, the baseball games as compared to ESPN NFL football, ESPN NHL hockey, ESPN NBA basketball, or NBA 2K5, even the college hoops games all seem to have this really strong appeal to them. They all reviewed really, really well. The presentation, of course, being ESPN influence was really, really strong. The games were fun to play, even though a few of them were flawed here and there, especially the NHL games, but not flawed enough to drive people away because the presentation was so good and it was just like watching games on ESPN back when ESPN would show hockey, but that's a story for another time. But this is the last. At this point, ESPN was on its way out. Sega Sports had already ejected itself from the conversation, and 2K Sports was about to really get underway. Now, with the ESPN license going away, even though with baseball games for the next couple of years, they would still utilize John Miller and uh, Joe Morgan for commentary, the ESPN graphics presentation would be completely gone, and it was up to Visual Concepts to rebuild that from scratch, a process that took some time in order to figure out. As we take a look at the back of the case here, uh, there is a Game Informer quote at the top, and it says here, the most exciting baseball game of the year. So uh, Andy Reiner, wherever you are, uh, I don't know whether this is from you or not, but it probably is because you are one of the strong baseball guys at GI and have been for a long time. Uh, so this game has several features to discuss. On-command base running. Base running was always an issue with me or for me with these games, uh, but on-command base running is definitely nice if you like to uh, steal bases or if you want to be aggressive on the base paths. Having this certainly helped. Uh, maximum fielding is also another feature included here. K-Zone, which is pulled right from ESPN Broadcasting in order to take a look at the strike zone, see where the pitches cross the plate or whether they cross the plate at all. I always thought that that was pretty interesting. Exclusive ESPN presentation, something, of course, that would be going away. Uh, new broadcast camera angles, chase cam, game cast live for simulation's sake. And commentary with John Miller and Joe Morgan, plus Carl Ravitch in the studio, which is pretty cool. Carl Ravitch did a great job, I think. Uh, deepest franchise mode ever. They say this all the time. Uh, the franchise mode usually gets better year after year, and this is no exception. And of course, you can see down in the uh, down near Derek Jeter's uh, nether regions there, uh, online is certainly something that is boasted and talked about. So this game did come out in 2005. It was the last of the 2K5 titles. And after this, that was pretty much it, with one exception, and we are actually going to get to it. But before we get there, uh, this is still sealed. There is the MLB 2K5 sticker right there, so we know that it is brand new. This game coming from 2005 means that it is 13 years old. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. Also remember that when this game was coming out, the, uh, the reigning World Series champions at this point, yeah, it was the Boston Red Sox who are playing in the World Series right now. Coincidence? Eh, who knows? Let's go ahead and get this open, shall we? I have talked for long enough. Let's go ahead and open this up because I have one more to show you. So as we open this up, oops, sorry about that. 
this one isn't going to be quite as clean as some of my other openings in the past. Sorry about that. There we go. Take the plastic off. And we're going to go ahead and take the seal off at the top. Now, if I remember right, by this point, uh, there really wasn't much in the instruction manuals. A lot of the manuals were on the disk, so you could read the manual whenever you wanted. But we'll go ahead and we'll take a look. And i got to be careful when I open this that the disk doesn't fall out. It does not. So when we open this up, there we go. I think that's right. Uh, the disk is here. The manual is here. We'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the manual. Uh, the manual and the disc look pretty much the same, uh, showing Derek Jeter on the cover. Uh, the manual is in black and white, unfortunately. It is just 32 pages long, and the last one is just telling us to register at 2ksports.com for some reason. Um, but it just it talks about the basics of the game. There are no real screenshots in here. As a matter of fact, there are none at all. It is just a bunch of text. So if you like reading words, um, you might find something interesting in this manual. But there's no screenshots really to hook up to it or at least to be able to see what it is they're talking about. Oh, there's one. I'm sorry. There's one right there. Uh, you don't really necessarily need to read the manual. But as someone who used to open these games as soon as he bought them, and usually what I would do is I would buy this at the local mall. I would take it to the food court with me. I would buy something to eat. I would tear the plastic off, and I would read the instruction manual while I was having my meal. Uh, so unsealed, how this whole idea got started really was emulating that same kind of thing. I get a brand new game. I want to be able to open it. I want to be able to check out the manual, check out the artwork, uh, see if there are any goodies inside of the case. Now, unfortunately, with uh, PlayStation 2 games and even original PlayStation games, getting cool things like posters and maps was something that wasn't very common. So you basically just got the manual and the disc and that was it. But that's enough to get you by because the games usually are worth playing in and of themselves. My experience with uh, the 2K5 baseball game was generally pretty positive. Unfortunately, baseball games, of all the sports games that I tend to play, baseball simulations, because they tend to go so long, it is really difficult to play full seasons. Uh, you feel like you have to simulate some games. You feel like you have to speed things up in order to play through seasons. And while they are enjoyable to play, usually I can play two, three, four, maybe even eight games before I just I have to move on to something else. My library is so deep that being able to invest myself in 162 game season plus playoffs is a big ask and understanding that when this game came out in 2005 I was in my 30s at that point so working for a living and when you work for a living you don't have as much game time as you did once have and that means that uh, you know Playing games sometimes has to fall to the wayside. So going through entire seasons like that, unless it's a game that you're really, really into or a game that can be really, really short, like playing a hockey game with five-minute periods, you're done in 15 minutes. It's done. It's over. And you can play as many games as you want over and over again. Uh, the ESPN graphics package is great. Uh, John Miller does okay with commentary. You either like John Miller or you don't. Uh, Joe Morgan's uh, observations are, are hit or miss. I think the baseball games, while they feel like ESPN presentations, and that's fine. I remember Sunday Night Baseball. I used to watch it every once in a great while, but not quite as strong as some of other uh, some of the other ESPN 2K games. Uh, NFL 2K, of course, being the strongest. I think uh, NBA 2K being pretty solid as well, and NHL 2K with the combination of Gary Thorne and Bill Clement uh, just being off the chain in terms of how good the commentary is. So again, that is Major League Baseball 2K5 powered by ESPN. The last mainline game uh, to use the ESPN style of presentation. There's one caveat, however. A little bit later on in 2005, as we got close to and even within the postseason, 2K Sports decided to dip one more time and try and hook people in time for the World Series. And what we wound up getting was Major League Baseball 2K5 World Series Edition. And you can even see the World Series logo right there. This is a 2K Sports game. It does still utilize the ESPN presentation. Uh, however, there is some new content that is included here. 
This is the look at the back. Unfortunately, the uh, the plastic kind of gets in the way, but these are the screenshots. And I'll read you some of the things from in the back. It says here, all the great features from Major League Baseball 2K5 Plus exclusive new content. So you do get the most current 2005 Major League Baseball game available. So you have updated rosters in this game, updated team standings as of when the game was published, and more. So here you get to play through World Series championship moments, which is kind of like a situations kind of deal, which for some people is a lot of fun. I tend to like those too. Pennant fever mode. So you can be two games out or eight games out, take your favorite franchise all the way to the World Series title. So you can now, rather than playing a full 162 game season, you can set up a pennant race and just play those games in order to try and get into the postseason. Updated rosters, as we talked about before. And there's one other special bonus in here, which I don't want to give away because I want to open this up. Uh, this is still just like uh, Major League Baseball 2K5 and the other baseball games developed by Cush Games. Uh, Visual Concepts does have a little bit of a role here, but again, not so much. Uh, it was more on the... Uh, the presentation side of things. Now, this still does use ESPN presentation. However, uh, ESPN is not listed anywhere, uh, either on the front or the back. So uh, this does not have uh, a sticker on the top. However, this appears to be new. I know that as we got uh, closer to the end of the PlayStation 2's lifespan, uh, some games did ship without the security seals at the top. So we will find out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. I think that this has been resealed, however, because of the way that this is wrapped. So we'll take that off. Resealed games are annoying. So there's the case. We're going to open this up. And when we do... And it's actually right at the top, which is pretty neat. So you also get a DVD called uh, World Series Great Moments, which is right there. So that's from Major League Baseball. So you actually get to check out some really cool World Series moments as part of the package. Uh, and in addition, you do get the uh, Major League Baseball 2 K5 uh, World Series Edition disc. Uh, I love the packaging here, by the way. I love the World Series baseball in the middle. I love the... Uh, the World Series sticker there as well, meaning that it's a uh, that it's an authentic product. When we take a look at the, and uh, let me uh, go ahead and open this again one more time so you can check and see that there's a manual, there is a uh, warranty card, and of course the discs are in here too. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the manual really quickly. Uh, I don't think there's much here to look at. We'll also take a look at the registration card too, because why not? We tend to do that on this show. Yeah, this has definitely been resealed. Oh well. So the warranty card, there's not very much to it. It is very basic. Uh, just asking for name, email address, uh, gender, age, mailing address, city, state, zip code, and the game that you bought, plus which systems you own, whether it's a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation, Xbox, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, or PC. And that's pretty much it. Very by the numbers here. And yes, you do have to put your own stamp on it if you send it in. Cheapos. So here's the manual. Uh, the manual, again, is uh, is in black and white and very similar to the 2K5, the Major League Baseball 2K5 manual. Uh, not really much new here. In order to really check out the new features, you just have to play the game for yourself uh, in order to check it out. Now, on the surface, you can look at World Series Edition, uh, or the uh, Major League Baseball 2K5 World Series Edition, as a cash-in, and really that's what it is. However, it's a cash-in that in my opinion, was worth getting. By my recollection, the game was cheaper. I believe it was $30, maybe even 20 by this point. Uh, so you could get into the World Series. It was certainly uh, being hyped because you were getting into the baseball postseason. You were getting the full game plus extra features plus updated rosters, which even though we had online play, getting the rosters updated was sometimes difficult and not everyone was playing online at that time either. So you're getting an updated disc, updated rosters, new gameplay modes, and the same level of uh, presentation and content that made Major League Baseball 2K5 as good a game as it was. You're getting that all in one tidy package. So if you were patient or if you had avoided Major League Baseball 2K5 and waited for the World Series edition, you were doing pretty well. Uh, we see this from time to time. I believe that MLB The Show, which is a PlayStation 4 
kind of set up. They do re-releases or they did a re-release of Major League or MLB 18, the show, where they did a World Series edition or a postseason edition with some extra things. Even though there weren't really extra modes per se, you did get some extra like stubs and cards and some other digital content. Uh, so it's not uncommon, but this is really the first time that I saw something like that and I thought that that was pretty neat. And then after that, that was the story for ESPN and 2K Sports. They went their separate ways. ESPN eventually wound up signing on with Electronic Arts. You would see them a lot in use with uh, NCAA football before that went away. And you also would see them with uh, NCAA college basketball or NCAA March Madness from time to time. Uh, I've talked about NCAA Basketball 10 as being one of the better uh presentation games in history, at least in my opinion, where it had dual presentation for both ESPN and for CBS Sports. Uh, that's a game that if you find it, you should probably hold on to it as long as you have a working PS3 or Xbox 360. It's really quite good. So that's a look at baseball games. That's a look at uh, my experience with them. Uh, the 2K baseball games, I think, are a little bit lacking. I think that if you compare those to something like MLB The Show, even for the PlayStation 2, I think the show tends to score a little bit better in terms of playability, even if the presentation isn't the ESPN presentation. Um, I think that it holds up well or even more favorable. So you can play either if you're looking for some baseball action during this uh, baseball World Series. Now is a good time to check it out, whether you're playing MLB The Show, whether you're playing uh, the 2K baseball games, or whether you're playing some RBI baseball perhaps. Uh, now is a good time to get in while the Fall Classic is in full swing. And we will see who emerges victorious, whether it's the Red Sox or the Dodgers. In the meantime, my friends, thanks for checking out this special episode of Unsealed. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them. And until the next time, my friends, see you later.